Thank you everyone for tuning in to today's webinar titled Propane Perspective, The Advantages of Autogas. Uh, I'm Matt Stevens-Rich with Clean Fuels Ohio, Projects Manager. And just before we get kicking off, just as I was uh, giving out a quick reminder, we will be having everyone place their phones on mute uh, just to, as a precaution. We will also be doing a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So feel free to submit questions in the chat bar under at the bottom right of your uh, webinar controls. We will also be recording this webinar for broadcast afterwards. So should there be any issue with that, please feel free to disconnect now. So in the meantime, we'll go ahead and get started. And so as you can see with the agenda, We'll first be doing a propane 101 overview, what propane autogas is and, and how it can be used as a motor fuel. We'll then move into a fleet testimony with National Church Residence and Center for Senior Health, which is a local fleet that has been uh, running propane autogas in their fleet. From there, we'll transition into ICOM North America. They are a, a fuel systems provider for aftermarket conversions, and Albert Venezio will be giving uh, a great presentation on how ICOM system helps fleets be able to uh, achieve fuel savings as well as emission reduction. And then also we'll be talking on grants and incentives that are currently available for fleets, followed by the panel Q&A. So once again, my name is Matt Stevens-Rich. I'm Projects Manager with Clean Fuels Ohio. If you're not familiar with who we are, we are a statewide nonprofit that works in promoting alternative fuel and fuel-efficient technologies in transportation. We're a part of the Clean Cities Coalition, which is a network of organizations across the United States that shares a similar mission of reducing petroleum usage in the transportation sector. And so as an organization, we're fuel and technology neutral. Today we will be speaking on propane, but we do also work in natural gas, uh, clean diesel technology, electric vehicle, and biofuels as well. We do also work with fleets through different consulting services. Sometimes this is just simply a matter of a high level green fleet policy, all the way down to a detailed fleet analysis where fleets are simply looking for a calculation on return on investment or uh, what types of fuels might be best suited for their fleet. We also do uh, services such as grant writing, as well as trainings and, and RFPs for uh, requesting of vehicles. Another program that Clean Fuels Ohio also operates through is the Ohio Green Fleets Award. Uh, National Church Residences Center is actually a certified green fleet. This program is designed to recognize leaders in alternative fuel in Ohio. Th that is, those fleets that are reducing their petroleum usage while also reducing emissions. So we'll be able to hear more on that later. So to get things started, there are really three cornerstones of autogas that really helps make it stand out as a viable fuel for fleets. First, e economics. Naturally, right now we're in a time of cheap gas, and so a lot of times folks are asking, well, really, is it worth my time to consider different alternative fuels? But even in this, these times of uh, more, uh, more affordable gasoline and diesel prices, there is still an economic case to be made for propane autogas. It is cost effective from a maintenance perspective. Uh, that is, it's, propane is a cleaner burning fuel, so you're going to see cheaper maintenance costs, uh, longer oil change intervals. Refueling infrastructure as well is actually the least expensive option of all uh, motor fuels. That is, there's uh, far less complexity involved in installing the system, which helps reduce the cost for installing. There's also uh, various federal and state incentives available, which I'll go into detail later on, that will help also drive at that ROI on propane replacement vehicles. And also, it, it's important to point out, a, a lot of fleets are able to experience at a maximum $2 a gallon for propane. Uh, many are actually able to go way underneath that to $185, $175 a gallon, which is definitely, uh, there's a lot to be said compared to diesel and gasoline prices. This is a graph I oftentimes like to also use to illustrate some of the economic uh, stability of propane. The top line is gasoline prices as they've evolved from, uh, on this chart, it's February 2010 to February 2012. You'll notice the red line of gasoline is spiking and, and there's a lot of peaks and valleys. 
the blue line for propane is a lot more constant. The advantage of that is it helps make the price a lot stabler as well as more predictable. Um, even more to this point, depending on the propane provider that you're working with, a lot of them will offer a, a, a one or two or even three year price per gallon uh, lock-in. That is, you'll be paying the same price during the entire term of that contract. That helps with fleet managers just being able to predict fuel costs. I know a lot of us would love to be able to see into the future and know if gasoline will hold steady at 235 uh, for the next two years, but sadly we don't have that ability. With propane auto gas, that option is on the table for many fleets that are working with their propane providers. The second point to propane autogas, it is a very clean burning fuel. It is a low carbon fuel that's able to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 12%, as you see, as well as nitrous oxides and carbon monoxide. Uh, overall, you're able to oftentimes see a greenhouse gas emission reduction of up to 17%. The one way I like to illustrate this is by going back to high school chemistry, which is Looking at the molecular structure of propane compared to diesel and gasoline, you'll see a lot of C's and H's. Those are carbons and hydrogens. Propane is a C3H8, uh, and that is definitely a lot smaller compared to diesel and gasoline, which has a lot more carbon and hydrogen packed into those molecules. All that really means is when it comes to combusting the fuel, propane is producing fewer carbons than gasoline and diesel, which helps make it a cleaner burning fuel. Propane autogas is also a very safe fuel. It is a, what's considered a low pressure fuel. It sits at 100 to 300 PSI uh, inside the tank. In, in a, that pressure keeps it in a liquid form at room temperature, and then it later turns into a vapor as it's injected into the engine. Propane also has a narrower ignition range compared to uh, gasoline and diesel. It's, it, it, that narrow ignition range means that it stays within a, a range where it can be ignited for a, a small portion of a time. It also is, does not have any groundwater contamination threat. It'll just naturally dissipate into the air if it is leaked out. Uh, that is to say, compared to gasoline and diesel, if it is leaking, it will pool as a fuel and it dissipates much less readily, uh, which speaks a little bit more to the safety as well. The tanks also are extremely safe for propane autogas. That, that is to say, uh, a lot of times uh, questions will be poised of, am I sitting on a ticking time bomb? Or, or you know, really, what, what is this fuel that I'm going to be using on my vehicle? But if you look at the track record of propane as a motor fuel, it, it really has been a, a very safe endeavor and has had a lot of uh, satisfied fleet customers, especially those that are uh, working as school bus fleets as well. As far as the actual propane station for refueling, uh, as I mentioned before, installation of propane stations is the least expensive alternative, uh, even compared to gasoline or diesel. That is, the tank is uh, sitting above ground and is connected to a, a low horsepower electric motor, which is used to dispense the fuel. That makes it a, a very low cost system. Uh, as I also mentioned earlier, there's no groundwater contamination, uh, as well as the monitoring system is a lot less complex and low noise as well, which sometimes uh, is something to consider if you're sitting close to a residence or, or other nearby businesses that might be concerned about noise levels. So these are some, uh, uh, these are some example pictures of different propane refueling stations. You'll see in the upper left, one that looks a little bit more like your traditional uh, gasoline island. And in, in the bottom left and bottom right, you see different systems that show a dispenser sit, sitting next to a tank. So different configurations are available for public and private uh, arrangements. And really also it, it makes a lot more customizable depending on what type of refueling uh, design you need. Onto the fuel connectors. This is a, a very similar appearing fuel connector to what you find with gasoline and diesel. It's meant to be ergonomically pretty similar just to make it a more comfortable experience. This design is actually one of the older designs where it is a, it is a, a, a locking mechanism which requires screwing and connecting to the nozzle. 
uh, there are a number of uh, different dispensing units that are moving to uh, a European design, which is an even easier function of just squeezing the nozzle, and it will naturally lock. It'll lock onto the uh, onto the receiving end that leads into the tank. The advantage of this type of fuel connector is it creates a, a, a hard mechanical lock. That is, once you're refueling, it's not impossible to disconnect which helps, again, address some of the safety concern, being sure that you have a connection that's not going to be leaking and that you cannot disconnect in the middle of refueling. Another aspect of propane autogas, which is oftentimes cited, is it's domestically sourced. 98% of propane is American made. Uh, that definitely goes to a lot of those that are encouraging reducing our dependence on foreign oil and, and using energy sources that we're able to produce here at home, including even in Ohio. So to transition into different vehicle choices, there are many choices that are on the market from off-road, uh, light duty uses such as forklifts and uh, um, lawnmowers, all the way up to heavy duty vehicles as well. It's a, it's a vehicle category that has been expanding over time and really has a lot to offer to different fleets. And another thing to also bear in mind is not only is there many vehicle availabilities, but there's also different types of propane fuel systems available. Uh, one such is called dedicated, where the vehicle is running on 100% propane the entire time. Naturally, this means that you're able to be using that low carbon fuel during the entire period, helping reduce fuel costs as well as emissions. Though for those uh, fleets that might need a little bit more leniency might not always be next to a propane refueling station. There's the opportunity for a biofuel system, which is able to run on propane and gasoline. In this way, you're able to start the vehicle on gasoline, transition it to propane, and then should the propane run out, it'll just revert back to the gasoline tank. There's also new technologies on the market of liquid injection. Uh, Albert will be able to speak more to this uh, in ICOM's presentation. But this liquid injection system, it's similar to what you find with direct injection in your traditional uh, everyday car that you find on the street nowadays. And that just simply helps the engine run much more reliably and much more efficiently compared to the older vapor systems uh, that used to be on the market. So to kick things off with the propane commercial mower example, uh, this is just a quick general ROI I created comparing the low cost of, of propane compared to gasoline. And when you're using that propane or gasoline mower over 500 hours, what kind of savings can you anticipate? The one thing to bear, uh, bear in mind is you'll see 900 gallons of gasoline is used over that 500 hour period and 975 gallons of propane is used over that period. So that is to say there's a little bit of an MPG drop, or in this case, uh, a little bit of a gallons used per hour drop in uh, for propane compared to gasoline. But that drop in uh, that drop in, in gallon usage is made up for in the cost difference between propane and gasoline. So overall, you're able to see a net savings. So to step another level up, propane-powered police vehicle, in this case, uh, we're assuming an, a 15 mile per gallon uh, combination, you'll notice that there's a premium cost, that is the propane vehicle is going to cost a little bit more when you're buying the vehicle, but over the lifetime of the vehicle, it'll be able to pay back that premium as well as show additional savings in the cost difference between propane and gasoline. So to continue the trend even further up, the propane F-250 is a utility vehicle found in many fleets. And in turn, you do see uh, that premium, but then overall you'll have a cost savings over the lifetime of the vehicle. In terms of MPG and performance, many fleets report very similar performance from a propane engine to gasoline or diesel. Uh, sometimes they will see a little bit of an, a mile per gallon drop, but nothing dramatic enough to uh, dissuade the uh, their adoption or continuing of operation. So to continue stepping up, E250 is another model that is in many uh, utility fleets, similar scenario that we saw with the F250. And jumping even further higher to the F350 setup, this in this case running on diesel, you'll see that again there's the premium 
but overall there is a lifetime savings and this is where a lot of fleets are very intrigued they'll be aware of a light duty of light duty vehicles that are able to run on propane or or school buses but it's the even smaller niche markets where there still is able to be a propane vehicle offered that they weren't aware of and and they find a lot of interest in so to continue on to the school bus example the school bus market has been very popular for propane autogas uh, many of school districts operate on diesel or gasoline buses and are able to are able to absorb that premium uh, for purchasing the vehicle and are able to have an overall lifetime savings on offering for propane. A major draw for this is uh, fuel cost savings, especially those that are still on uh, fuel contracts that aren't able to capture the cheaper gasoline or diesel rates that we currently have. Another aspect as well as emission reduction these buses are naturally operating around children all day. So the opportunity to reduce emissions when you're, when you're operating around uh, uh, such a demographic, it really is a, an easy sell for many fleets that are, that are operating in school districts. So some example propane success stories. These are some fleets that Clean Fuels Ohio has worked with over the years of different fleets that were able to adopt propane autogas. Yellow Cab of Columbus was able to convert a number of their uh, taxis to run on propane, and they run throughout Columbus. They also did build a private propane filling station, which is available for the taxi use. City of Columbus also uh, converted a large number of their vehicles over to run on propane. Uh, these are those F-250 trucks that are running around the town, are running around town doing different tasks. And overall, it's been a, a, a good adoption rate and has also really helped save the city uh, operating expenses in terms of fuel cost savings. Pike Delta York is an, a, an example school district that was able to adopt propane buses. This is a smaller school district, by, by no means a very large fleet, but they were still able to take, opportunity, take advantage of a grant that was made available and be able to convert their buses over to run on propane. And then Frito-Lay, very large fleet that was able to convert a number of their delivery trucks in Ohio to run on propane. So really, this gives a great uh, example of uh, different private businesses, municipalities, school districts, and even large private uh, companies that have been able to convert over to propane. So with that, I'll transition over to talk about uh, the fleet testimony that Judy Dallas will be giving today on behalf of National Church Residences Center for Senior Health. Uh, National Church Residences Center for Senior Health is located here in Columbus and has a shuttle bus fleet that consists of now nine vehicles operating on propane autogas. The health center is fully utilizing its propane autogas vehicles to transport seniors daily. By utilizing these cleaner burning propane autogas vehicles, the center is reducing harmful emissions from conventional gasoline powered engines. Additionally, the center is able to take advantage of an average cost of propane sold for $2.10 gallon equivalent, which really helps add to significant fuel savings for the center since the deployment of its vehicles in December 2012. To commend these accomplishments, National Church Residences Center for Senior Health was certified as a one-star Ohio Green Fleet in 2013 by Clean Fields Ohio. So with that introduction, I will transition over to Judy and have her talk about National Church. Oh, bear with me here, I'm trying to unmute Judy. All right, Judy, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, um, and hi, everyone. We, um, as you said, we provide adult um, transportation for seniors and disabled um, clients. We have a fleet of 30 cutaway vehicles, and they're on the Ford, uh, Ford E350 chassis. Uh, we also have two Chevys. They're a little bit older that we use. We overall drive um, our vehicles probably over 600,000 miles 
miles per year, and we keep a vehicle for 300 um, miles lifetime. So like you said, we converted propane in 2012, uh, 12 in January 20 through an Ohio Advanced Transportation Partnership grant that we discovered through fuels, and then later we converted two more vehicles. And then we applied for vehicles from some other local foundations to convert three additional, which brought us to the total of nine. We have since received two additional vehicles on grants, and we are trying to secure additional funding to convert those vehicles. We're very pleased with the propane. We're pleased with the service. Usually the buses don't come with the ICOM kit. Our service provider puts that kit on. The bus is only out of service for two, no more than three days. And uh, we, we don't even mind waiting those two or three days because of the cost savings that we see. We've been experiencing about $6,000 a year in fuel savings. And as a um, nonprofit, those dollars really mean a lot to us. Most of our revenue is generated through um, funding for our clients, and uh, most of the time we are not recouping the um, the cost for the service that we're providing. So any time that we can save money, that's that's when, what we do. How do we get the conversation started? Our our um, Director of Facilities was over near uh, the airport and saw some vans fueling there. There's a fueling station there at our service provider. And so he just simply asked the question, what is doing? Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, that, that provider referred us to Clean Fuels Ohio. And then with that partnership and them enabling us to secure funding, uh, we, 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 we looked at it and we thought, well, it's almost too good to be true, but we determined that there were legitimate cost, legitimate cost savings. So uh, the conversions were easy, the integration was easy. Uh, we did have some concerns, cost, of course, for the conversion, safety. Uh, we are, like I said, transporting senior citizens and uh, folks who um, may uh, may not even be able to exit a vehicle in case of an emergency. So to us, safety was the utmost, utmost concern, and of course, efficiency and reducing our uh, footprint. When we um, when we once we got the conversion, it was so easy. Uh, the, the biggest factor that we had where the drivers were concerned about is it going to be a difference, am I safe, how am I going to fuel this bus, what does this mean? And so uh, we were trained by our uh, fuel provider, everyone had, and they're all now certified, pro, certified to fuel the propane buses, the, tra the training is safety related, and um, you, the, like he said, the as a buy fuel, buy, buy fuel because we ran on gas and propane. So um, the when we start our vehicles, they start out in the gasoline mode, but then after they warm up, and I'm not sure of all the technical part, but after they warm up for a couple of minutes, they automatically switch over to propane. You can't tell the difference at all. The drivers don't know when it switches. We have a nice little... Um, meter on our dashboard, and uh, it, it doesn't indicate that it's um, any different, but there are little red lights that tell us where, how much fuel we have and when we need to refuel. As far as the uh, fuel economy, we're, we're experiencing um, no more than one or two gallons difference between the gas and propane. Uh, we have um, clients in the city, of course, but we have a lot of clients in the outer lying areas, clients close to West Jeff, uh, Hilliard, Dublin, Pickerington, Pataskula. And so those are the routes that we put those buses on, uh, um, especially when the gas prices were higher, uh, we, we utilized the buses in the most efficient way that we possibly could. We were going to um, install a propane dispenser on our property, but they built an apartment complex 
um, close, and so then uh, we were no longer conducive to the installation. So we'll continue to purchase the fuel now, but our long-term goal is to move our whole entire fleet operation into our own um, facility and then we will install a um, a fueling station and hopefully uh, also uh, retail it to other uh, vendors um, the maintenance cost one of the things that we don't really see uh, a big difference because we install propane on brand new vehicles. So we already have a lower um, uh, cost per mile on our maintenance, but now that we're going into our second full year, uh, or heading into our third full year, uh, we're noticing that um, the less maintenance on the, on the vehicles that the propane was initially installed on, um, and again, uh, less time between oil changes. So now we're really beginning to experience the maintenance savings. Um, I don't have mechanics on site. Our, our, our service provider does all that. Like I said, they do the installation, they do all the maintenance. So uh, we are a very happy um, provider. We're very happy with our systems. We plan to, our goal is to become 100% as we as we acquire new vehicles, we will be converting all of them to propane. Uh, that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Thanks, uh, Judy. And actually, we'll hold questions till the end and be able to wrap that in there. But that, thank you again for your uh, opportunity to speak on your experience with Autogas. Appreciate it. So with that, we'll move on to... Uh, Albert Venezia with ICOM North America, who will be speaking on uh, different uh, different fuels that ICOM has available for for different uh, vehicle applications. Apologize, I'm trying to transition over here. All right, so with that, Albert, the floor is yours. Hi, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Clean Fuel Iowa. It's a great partner and it's great to work with you. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out to listen. Um, ICOM North America, as Judy noticed, is a uh, system manufacturer of liquid injection propane systems. And Judy, thank you very much for your business, and that's a great success story. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. Mm -hmm. So ICOM North America covers USA, Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. We have close to 100 dealers. About 85 of those are in the USA, about a dozen or so in Canada, and a handful in Mexico and the Caribbean. Next slide, please. And Matt covered really well uh, why propane is such a good option. I'll just the, the big three for me is a substantial fuel savings cost for fleets, the reduced emissions, and it's a domestic fuel source. And we're one of the only few alternative fuels or fuels in general that actually reduces greenhouse gas emissions. And that's critical with the new uh, Obama plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Next slide, please. Propane's very, very safe. It's safer than gasoline or, and gasoline or any other fuel. Uh, propane tanks are thick steel tanks. Uh, in an accident, there is many safety valves that would cause, if a, if a hose is ruptured, that would slam shut the flow of propane so it becomes a sealed unit. And we have a great 12-year track record in the USA and a 30-year track record of safety uh, in yeah. Europe and Australia. Next slide, please. Also covered very well by Matt, but uh, there's no spillage, shrinkage, pilferage, contamination, or non-toxic. Next slide, please. And really, bottom line, in our opinion, and I've been doing this 25 years in alternative fuels and many alternative okay. fuels, pro propane is the most viable and practical alternative fuel. It makes what? it easy for the, the fleets to transition yeah. in, and it's a very nice oh. return on investment. Next yeah. slide, please. I know. It needed to fit within oh, sorry, the Albert. 20 space. Sorry, Everyone, please be sure that you don't get some chatter. What? 
Um, no, the Southeast show is going to come up somewhere. So, yeah. So, I come global in Michigan, USA, and then ICOM in Italy has been in Italy for over 30 years. It handles the European, Asian, and Australian markets. Next slide, please. There's one of the ICOM factories in Italy. There's three of them. They're a tier one OEM supplier. Next slide. And ICOM North America. We really like to thank our partners who we work very closely with which uh, on the projects in Ohio. And that includes bus services based in Columbus, Ohio, a bus dealer uh, actually inside Cleveland Airport and have other locations. And we've done hundreds of propane systems with them where they actually sell the new bus with the ICOM system on it. Uh, that includes the, the, they supply the, the uh, technology to Judy's company uh, to provide a ride to Columbus Airport. Uh, provide a ride in Cleveland has over 50 ICOM vehicles and bus service trucks. And uh, over uh, Columbus Airport has over 30, it might even be 40 at this point. So a great partner. Uh, work close with Amerigas on majority of those partner, uh, majority of those projects. That's with Steve Prepop, and I know there's a number of projects also with Feral Gas. Uh, and just like to go into ICOM North America. So ICOM invented and patented their version of liquid injection many years ago. Uh, brought it to the United States in 2004, and many OEM projects on school buses and propane bobtails and many other many projects uh, were done with that technology and ICOM is one of the only companies, I think the only one in the US that does both a biofuel and a monofuel system. So we have biofuel available on everything and monofuel when it's practical. Uh, there's a lot of practical monofuel projects out there. We do a lot with UPS uh, and they're all monofuel but a majority of what we sell is biofuel. So what do we do? We assemble, manufacture, and certify the ICOM system, which includes the tanks and the fuel rails, and we assemble everything with a high domestic content. We meet all the safety standards in the USA. I think we're one of the few. That's NFP 58, National Fire Protection 58. That's critical. We're EPA certified for emissions. We're Canadian certified, which means we're certified to minus 40 degrees and for safety and durability. We've been crash tested on a number of vehicles. And we use ASME certified tanks with the ICOM patented fuel uh, valves, which are in a protective collar and are actually recessed in the tank. Again, that's an ICOM patent, again, for safety. So if there's ever a terrible accident, the, the actual valves are actually recessed into the tank. Only ones that do that. Next slide, please, Matt. Uh, ICOM about six months ago opened our technology and training center just around the corner from our, our headquarters. What we do there is we bring in fleets and propane companies and anyone interested, and we do a whole overview on propane. Uh, we'll have a number of propane vehicles we're always working on, integration, conversion. Uh, we have a fuel station there provided by Amerigas, and we do a whole class, and it can be from a few hours to a couple days. It can include training on vehicles, on how to install the systems, on how to do service. It can be training just on how to, how to sell the systems. I'm listening to Albert. Next slide, please. And ICOM's been the innovator in the industry. We have many patents to our names. Uh, started with the toroidal, the donut tank that you saw on an earlier slide. That kind of looks like a donut. We invented and patented that about 30 years ago. Others make them now. Uh, but that we've made about three, almost four million of those. Uh, and that made the whole market work in Europe. And then we bought liquid injection, we manufactured and in, in, uh, certified and patented liquid injection system, and that's kind of the base system for lots of technologies out there. We also, the, the only kind of weakness for liquid injection is the fuel pump was sitting at the bottom of the tank. ICOM brought, changed that and that's no longer an issue, where the fuel pump is semi-external, and if you have to service or replace that fuel pump, it's about a 20-25 minute procedure instead of having to have to vent that tank in many hours. So it's very safe, very easy, and we've had that for five years in the ICOM Direct project. We've also invented and patented ICOM liquid injection for direct injection engines, which I'll get into in a minute or two, as well as a liquid injection diesel blend that's not yet on the U.S. market, it's on other markets. So in Europe, we do a lot of hybrid electric uh, propane vehicles. Next slide, please. This is the basic ICOM biofuel system. And we're the only ones where it's very simple to install. Uh, a trained installer can do most any vehicles in one day. Uh, he doesn't have to reprogram the, the, uh, the OEM brain. 
or he doesn't have a backup brain to try to match the OEM brain. The OEM, ECU, or brain actually drives our system, and we calibrate through the injectors. There's one service item on the system, and that's the fuel filter that you see, and that's replaced once a year or every 50,000 miles. It's a very seamless system, and we give it as plug and play as possible to our dealer network. Next slide, please. Keep in mind that's also available in monofuel on many applications, including work trucks and shuttle buses and so forth. So again, we mentioned the plug and play system. When we sell a system, we sell every component comes in that system, from a fuse to a hose to whatever you would need to install that system. Again, there's no need to alter the OEM ECU because the propane injectors are calibrated to match the gasoline injectors. Use your standard uh, factory OBD2 uh, diagnostic tools from Ford or GM or Snap-on or whoever. Uh, we're not affected by temperature change. We, as I mentioned, we start up to mi at, at minus 40 degrees on monofuel propane. Uh, we're certified for that. We do that with UPS in Canada. And there's no cutting, splicing, or soldering. There's only three electrical connections, and that's to the battery. Next slide, please. And you know, for many years, we had vapor systems. There's still some vapor systems out there. What liquid injection did is it brought the bar, made the bar a much tighter bar because the vehicle runs and performs just like a gasoline vehicle. Being liquid, you get the benefits of the physics of liquid, which means your power and torque, drivability, and cold startability match or exceed the gasoline. So in the end, the driver doesn't feel any difference. If he's towing a load or he has a heavy load on there, he'll actually have a little more power than he will on gasoline. So that's a huge advantage where in most of the vapor systems, you, you don't have that advantage. And that's just the physics of injecting a liquid propane and it, against a vapor propane. Keep in mind, in its natural state, propane is basically a liquid. It's a liquid in the tank. We keep it a liquid. We inject it as a liquid. We're on a vapor system. It's a liquid in the tank. They're transforming it to vapor and they're pushing into the manifold. With liquid, we don't have valve recession issues. We never had an engine failure in, uh, in North America, probably worldwide, in, in 12 years. Uh, why? Because we're injecting propane as a liquid. It has a cold charge. Vapor is going in dry with a hot charge, kind of like natural gases and, and vapor systems that tend to have a, uh, excessive valve recession on a certain percentage. Next up, slide, please. So that was the game changer. And every OEM project in North America in the last 10 years, everyone has been a liquid injection system technology, and most everyone has been the ICOM. Uh, JTG multivalve, this is the pump that we were talking about earlier where it's actually external and can be replaced or serviced in 20 minutes or 25 minutes without depressurizing and evacuating the tank. Uh, technicians will tell you that's a very important thing. Uh, that, that's again an icon patent. Next slide, please. So just to touch on it a little bit, the advantage is that we're going in as a liquid. It's about minus 50 degrees when we inject. So we have a cold charge to the manifold and the engine and the exhaust valves love that. And that's a huge benefit. And again, that's just physics. Next slide. And natural gas vehicles. Natural gas vehicles are great. Definitely have their place. Uh, spent 10 years with natural gas vehicles. Uh, a lot of benefits to them. We find generally for fleets that propane has many advantages and I'll just go into them very quickly. Uh, on the right, you see a natural gas tank. Every natural gas tank will be that shape. There can be different types of materials, but they'll be that shape. Where a propane tank can be a donut shape, or it can be a manifold like you see in the top left, or it can be a cylindrical, or it can be a tri-manifold, a tri it can be a quadruple manifold. So propane tanks, because we're at much lower pressure, 312 PSI, natural gas in the USA is at 3600 PSI, we have more flexibility in what we can do with tanks. So we get more gallonage capacity in a smaller area. Generally, it's somewhere between 3 to 1 to 4 to 1. Give an example of that. On the top right, if that was a 20-inch diameter by 50-inch length tank, for natural gas, you get about 17 gallons GGE, gasoline gallon equivalent. If that was a propane tank of the same dimensions, you get 48 usable gallons. So almost a 3 to 1 ratio. Propane liquid injection systems tend to be about 50% less than the equivalent natural gas system on the same vehicle where you're actually getting superior performance as far as power toward drivability and cold weather starting. And very, very important is the fueling infrastructure. All our propane partners can put in infrastructure at a very limited cost. Uh, Superior Energy can put in a station as they did a provider ride. Uh, they can actually do a, a temporary station. Uh, they do it across the United States. 
a great fueling partner for us and it's very limited cost whether it, that cost is borne by the fuel company such as Amerigas and it's built into the price or that is purchased separately it's a very it's about one one twentieth of the cost of a natural gas station a propane station critically important to that is the cost of maintaining that station is also very slight so when we put in our station at our we didn't see our electric bill go up at all many natural gas stations are many thousands of dollars a month in electricity to keep them running so apples to apples propane wins virtually every time I already mentioned about the tanks and the pressure and another key point is the facility if you're going to install or service natural gas vehicles or park them underground usually going to have to make some pretty dramatic modifications to the buildings very rarely is that needed with uh, propane vehicles Again, natural gas, I'm a big believer in natural gas vehicles too. They definitely have their place, but I think propane head to head most wins the most every time. Next slide, please. ICOM uh, leads the industry in EPA certifications. We have over 700 EPA certified vehicle platforms. Uh, there's a, a listing of our Ford platforms. Uh, uh, most of the Fords are from 2009 up to 2015. Next slide, please, man. GM, we have a number of GMs also, and then those are from 2010 to 2015. What does that mean? We can convert most any of those vehicles with those engines within that year grouping. Those are EPA certified. And that's, that list is on ICOM's website. It's updated frequently as we get more certifications. Next slide, please. And this is what we're working on now, the Ford Transit, very popular because it replaces the Ford Econoline van that has the 3.7 engine. Uh, that's in the lab now uh, and hope to be certified uh, May, June. Uh, we've just finished the one on the bottom right, which is the Explorer Taurus MKZ MKT uh, with the 3.7. That'll be available in a few weeks. Uh, so those two, one is concluded, one is, is just getting started. The Ford F-150 is going to start here shortly with the 5.0. We have the Ford F-150 with the 3.7. And we're doing a GM 6.0, a variety of them. There's a variety of different ones from light duty to medium duty to heavy duty, and some 4.3 GM vans also. Next slide, please. And I just should probably take a minute on EPA certifications. It's a critical factor that oftentimes is not known by fleets because they don't have a need to know it on anything else that they do. Every system, whether it's natural gas or propane or any alternative fuel, must be EPA certified or approved. Uh, certified, there's a couple different categories of that, but in the end, each system requires an EPA approval, sometimes it's a full certification, sometimes it's an intermediate, uh, which means it's just a little less testing, uh, but there's always an EPA approval needed. It's quite extensive, it's quite, uh, it's very expensive, so you don't see many, cons uh, many companies such as ourselves doing it, but your, your technology has to be good enough to achieve it. You have to have, have hit a certain standard, and each time you do a certified system is actually a fee. So it's a, a EPA, it's great that EPA is there because it makes sure that the technologies are good enough to meet the needs of the vehicles. And my, my slides went dead, but I can still talk them. Um, so we also now have a direct injection liquid injection systems. So for the last few years in the USA, most light duty vehicles have transitioned from regular injection that we've had since about 1975 to direct injection. And the difference on the gasoline vehicle it went from injecting into the manifold gasoline to injecting down in the combustion chamber gasoline. So to deal with that, we invented a system in Europe about six years ago and patented it to inject propane as a liquid through the existing gasoline injector. Keep in mind, this is only on direct injection engines such as GM Ecotech or Ford uh, EcoBoost. Uh, we were the first a certification. Uh, that was for a GM Ecotec 5.3 Silverado, Sierra, and Tahoe. Uh, and that was with the direct injection for 2014. Hope to have that for 2015 shortly. And we're pleased to announce that we received a propane education grant to certify a number of Ford Echo Boost uh, for EPA and CARB California uh, this year. Next slide, please. And so that technology, the tank is the same. You, we, have, we have about 30 different tanks that we use in USA. Uh, that, that doesn't change anything, but the system is a bit different because we're dealing with direct injection engines, not traditional injection engines. And I believe ICOM is the only one that has this uh, technology. 
Um, and then, we, again, we have this whole certification plan. Next slide, please. I'm, I'm not looking at any slides. So I'm going from memory, but I'll do the best I can. If we're looking at our map of the USA, uh, if we can get to that slide, Matt, if that's not up there. Our dealer network, we have about 85 dealers in the USA, and we're adding probably about 12 more this year. We'll get it close to 100. Uh, next slide, please. And I believe this should be the Canadian slide. Uh, we're close to Canada. We do a lot of business in Canada. We're one of the few companies that are certified for Canada. And the next slide should be our thank you slide. Matt? Yep, that's uh, correct. Get us okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time out to listen. Any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Thanks again for uh, doing that overview, uh, Albert. So with that, I'll just quickly go over uh, some different grants and incentives that are out there for uh, fleets that are considering converting over to propane or, or adding additional vehicles to their fleet. And then we'll have some opportunity for some Q&A. So here in Ohio, and admittedly, we're going to have, we do have some fleets that are tuning in from outside of Ohio. So uh, I'll be speaking a little bit more on the state level side, but there's always federal grants that are coming along. But here in Ohio, there is what's called the Diesel Emission Reduction Grant. This is administered by the Ohio uh, Environmental Protection Agency. It is slated to provide $20 million for fiscal year 2015. Uh, and there are additional rounds of awards set for 2016 and 17 that have been allotted but are awaiting approval. And these projects include diesel vehicle retrofits, uh, engine repowers, and full replacement of vehicles as well. So the, in order to be eligible for DERG, which is the acronym for the grant, you need to operate in a non-attainment county for 65% or more of the time. Those non-attainment counties are highlighted in green to the right here, non-attainment being of poor air quality. So you'll notice a lot of larger metro areas are in such counties. For school bus, refuse, and mass transit, there's a reimbursement of up to 80% of the cost of the new vehicle, and government fleets 80% of the incremental cost. That is the difference between the traditional gasoline or diesel vehicle and the alternative fuel uh, addition of the vehicle. So propane vehicles absolutely are eligible for this grant. And if you would like more information on this, we are anticipating a spring round of DERG to be announced. Uh, feel free to get in contact with me after the webinar and I can get you more information. So in fiscal year 2013, Clean Fuels Ohio, we collaborated with a number of partners and were able to secure $7.24 million for 15 partner fleets uh, varying in different public and private fleets as well as municipal fleets. So uh, we've had great success working with our partners and, and it's been a great program over the years. Another program I'd like to make mention of that ICOM is also participating in uh, through uh, Metro Worldwide is what we're calling the Midwest Drives Initiative. This is a brand new program that we're just now launching. We were awarded uh, uh, 500 thousand dollars by the Department of Energy for an alternative fuel vehicle deployment initiative. So the purpose of this initiative is to get alternative fuel vehicles in the hands of fleets that are considering converting but would like to give a test run. And so we have 42 vehicles that are available for short-term fleet demonstrations. And also built into this is the fleets will be driving the vehicles and there will be a data logging uh, element also built in that will allow us to create a case study comparing how the alternative fuel vehicle performed in the real world running different cycles and duty loads. The real draw of this is it helps give us a more apples to apples comparison. We can spout all the different stats or, or EPA estimated miles that we want, but this is really going to help us drive at how the vehicles are performing when they are supplementing uh, another regular uh, vehicle during a everyday operation. So the different vehicles, they range from class one to eight, and it actually covers propane as well as CNG uh, electric vehicles, electric hybrid, and biodiesel. So we really are able to cover uh, the gambit of different alternative fuels out there. Our program is anticipated to launch mid-2015, and we're currently accepting fleets. So if you would like more information, again, feel free to get in touch with us and we can get you more information. 
And then we also have the Ohio Green Fleets program, which I mentioned earlier, uh, of which uh, uh, National um, Residence is a part of. This is a great program that helps us really uh, recognize leaders in Ohio. So overall, we have uh, over 67 Green Fleets recognized that have reduced uh, a collective over 10 million gallons of petroleum. And we are currently accepting applications for the next round of Ohio Green Fleet. So if you are interested in getting more information on how to become certified, feel free to get in touch. And then finally, I'll go over uh, and be sure to make mention of the Midwest Green Fleets Forum and Expo. Traditionally, uh, for the Ohio Green Fleets, we've done that as an award ceremony, a one-day event where we also wrap in some uh, different uh, different expo opportunity for vendors, but also some workshops. We're looking to branch that even further out into a two-day uh, a two-day conference style where we're able to go even more in depth on different workshops and, and topics. So it'll be September 23rd and 24th here in Ohio. And more information can be found at midwestgreenfleets.com. That's linking directly to our Clean Fuels Ohio website where we have a section on it. And this is just further background on it. Overall, we'll be partnering with 100 best fleets, as well as uh, MEMA, which is the Municipal Equipment Maintenance Association, two organizations that we've been able to work with in the past and are excited to be able to create this uh, even larger program around. So that wraps up the webinar. Right now, we'll transition into questions, which we have a few entered into the chat, uh, which I will be throwing up to Albert and, and Judy. Right now I'm gonna unmute everybody. So please again, be sure that you have your phone set to mute on your side. That way we don't have too much uh, back chatter. Though actually before I do that, I'll just go over some of the chat questions. So this is going to be, let's see, first. So first, I, a question to a question to Albert. Uh, one question came up on uh, what what does the relationship look like on uh, propane fuel system or fuel economy? Judy made mention of a slight drop in MPG. Are you able to talk broader to different fleets you work with and what kind of MPG difference you, there has been experienced? Sure. Uh, we've done testing as well as data from fleets, and it varies. So talking liquid injection, it tends to get better miles per gallon than vapor injection, but we see anywhere from a 3 to 12% difference, meaning 3 to 12% less miles per gallon than on gasoline, which is very good on the, on the liquid injection propane side. And there's many factors as the driver, the conditions, the fuel, and so forth. But generally we see between 3 to 12% difference. When we do a project, we normally quote 10% to be conservative. Uh, again, it varies, but that's generally what we see. Excellent. And another question that we did receive was what kind of uh, maintenance or, or what kind of training is needed for mechanics to do work on propane vehicles? Judy or Albert, if you'd like to jump in on that. Uh, yeah, from, from the service point, so we have 85 dealers around the country and about 100 fleets outside that dealer network where we did the conversions or one of the bus dealers like bus services or someone sold them the vehicle. And we'll train them just on the service side, so not on the installation of the system. Uh, it's very basic. The first part is about an hour or so safety training course on propane, uh, which is uh, a very good course. And then second after that is the, the service side of the ICOM system. And first, first part of that is the maintenance, so the changing of the filter, how to go about that, uh, how to check things when you have to bring the vehicle in for an uh, oil change, just double check the hoses and stuff like that. And then more, then it gets more into diagnostics. If you have an issue, what do you have to do? All of ICOM's installation and service manuals are on our website. Uh, you have to have an access code to get in, but there's very detailed instructions, as well as we have three different technicians who were the trainers to all those dealers and fleets, so they usually know them personally, uh, that can help with any questions or answers. And it's uh, there's only a few moving parts, so it's a very simple system. Nothing is perfect, uh, but it's very simple to train on service. And usually, you know, we sell, bus service will sell someone 10 buses, let's just say, and they may have their first service maintenance point a few months later, and they may have forgotten because they're very, very busy and they have a lot of things going on. So we might get a quick call, what do we have to do, and we'll bring them to our website, and, you know, they can just download it and, 
you know, how to replace the filter or they're having this issue, is this, this situation, what do they do? And uh, again, we're, we're here to support them. Uh, we have a very good technical team that does that. Excellent. Thanks for the explanation, Albert. And then one last question that I have sent to me is, uh, for interested fleets, what would the next step be, uh, at least in terms of trying to gauge what types of vehicles uh, might be able to fit in their fleet? Yeah, and that's a really key question. And what we try to do is we don't try to sell fleets. We try to educate the fleets and help them to make the right choice on the fuel. It's not always going to be propane, but propane tends to win a lot more than it loses. And then what system fits. So uh, we always find it's better that they ease into it. So let's say I have a fleet of 100 or 200 vehicles or 20 vehicles. We always say start with a couple, two or three or five. We'll walk you through that. But before we can do that, we have to make sure, as ICOM, we have an EPA certification for the vehicles you're interested in doing. And if we don't, and we know someone else that does, there's only a few other companies out there that do this that we have faith in, we'll just say, we don't have it, but go, go talk to these people. And that's the first requirement. If we don't have that certification or it's not pending, we can't do anything. And neither should or could anyone else. Thanks for that, Albert. Well, with that, we're, we're coming right on the hour, so I'll call to close here. But again, if there are any questions, feel free to get in touch. My contact information is up there. And also, you can visit our website at cleanfuelsohio.org. Thanks again to Judy Dallas for National Church Residences Center and Albert Venezio of ICOM North America for sharing their expertise and experience in propane autogas. And feel free to get in touch with us. We can provide their contact information if you'd like to talk further with either of those two. Have a good rest of the day, everyone. Thank you, Matt.